Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better at veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv. So I-V-D-I, International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash inv, and we'll get you the information that you need. Some questions regarding estimates and costs, and really got a lot of questions regarding um, instra, um, estimates and costs and talking to folks. And again, I want you guys to remember that 80-20 rule. You know, this is a this is a high end service. Dentistry, when done correctly, is not a cheap service, and so it it's not going to be for everybody. And don't be discouraged if you are talking about it. Um, on average, statistically, 80% are going to decline. They're just not either financially or they don't uh, believe in it and won't want to make that that move forward. What we're targeting is our A and B clients who are um, the clients that make up 80% of our revenue, revenue statistically, that 80-20 rule. And, um, and these folks are the ones that are looking for high standard of care and are willing to pay for that high standard of care. And so these are the folks that are going to um, follow and be much more compliant with your recommendations. Um, and they're looking to you for correct recommendations and the, the best quality of care. So keep that in mind when you're talking to folks. Um, we can educate as much as we can, um, but if they're not in that mindset that this is their baby, this is their child, um, we're, we're buying into what you're recommending, um, it's very difficult to get folks to move forward. So we want to educate correctly and, um, and then make, let them make the ultimate decision. Um, what is your opinion on charging for extractions? That's our um, first question here. And we certainly, um, we certainly charge um, by extraction based on the status of the tooth and what type of tooth it is. Remember, we've got multi um, uh, stats as far as tooth anatomy goes. We can have single, double, or triple. We can have um, canines uh, versus first mandibular molars. And so we want to charge appropriately. And so we charge um, per tooth, per status of the tooth. So we describe what tooth it is, whether it be a canine, single, double, or triple, first mandibular molar. And then we also describe the status of that tooth, whether it's immobile, partially mobile, or severely mobile. And so we have codes in our computer software that covers all of those different types of teeth and status of that tooth, as well as our anesthesia time. So we actually choose to charge by both of those parameters so that the owners can see what type of, um, what type of tooth it is so it's, it shows much more value um, as far as all of that goes. So we want to make sure that we're following that and we charge uh, both actually um, for um, by tooth, specifically what type of tooth, status of tooth, and then anesthesia time typically in, in 15 minute increments. How do we charge for bone grafting? Uh, do you go based off multiple locations or just one general charge? Bone grafting typically um, we're doing 
um, on average, maybe one, maybe two sites in a dog. It's not something that would be uh, a generalized charge uh, because um, it is, you know, we're looking for very specific pathology. And so we typically charge per site. Um, in, in most patients, that's, that's typically what we're, we're treating is usually one or two sites. So um, that's, uh, that's how we're going to charge just to make it um, more um, affordable. And, um, and usually we're only do, doing one or two sites. All right. We have a big uh, problem with clients wanting to do the dental work but not having the finances to go through with the work. work. And um, yeah, this is a this is a challenge. Those clients that you know want to do the best for their patient, and so we talk about a couple of different um, scenarios. Um, and number one, uh, we're going to talk about care credit. We want to help these folks finance this procedure, and so care credit has been very very helpful in a lot of practices with um, helping folks with big bills that don't have a lot to pay out of pocket. And so we, um, we use that number one. Number two, um, sometimes we'll stage uh, procedures where we'll do um, the procedure, do the assessment, and then try and work with that owner's budget. Um, they have to have some type of budget. If they don't have anything beyond the cleaning and assessment, um, you know, we're going to have to recommend that they maybe save up for several months before moving forward so it gives us some type of wiggle room to work with these clients so they have some type of budget. So we do the most uh, severely affected um, teeth uh, extractions and get all that cleaned up and then maybe have them come back in two to three months to complete the treatment plan. So that's always a plan B for those folks that really want to move forward and, um, and get their patients treated. Uh, lots of questions here regarding um, estimates without extractions and to try and predict. Um, and uh, this is where it can be a, a little challenging, but again, we've got to set expectations correctly. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we know that 85% of patients over the age of three um, and those patients under 15 pounds are going to have some degree of periodontal disease. And so we know that kind of going in, but we've got to set their expectations correctly. And so whenever I, um, whenever we see a patient on a consult right before we admit, um, you know, is, is this a small breed dog? Has it been a long time since it's ever had a cleaning and assessment? We know there's going to be some work in there. And so we've got to let them know most likely it's going to go you know, well beyond this estimate of just the oral diagnostics. We just don't know how much until we see those x-rays and get a definitive diagnosis. And that's kind of the, you know, the glitch there because we can never get a definitive diagnosis just on gross exam. We can certainly see if there's mobile teeth. We can certainly see if there's odor. Um, but it does not give us a clear picture of the entire mouth without getting those x-rays first, and that's got to be done under anesthesia. So we've got to kind of explain this to the owner. And the other thing is, it may not always be extractions. If we have a patient where the bone loss isn't as advanced and we can do some root planing periodontal therapy, that's the other thing that the x-rays are going to tell us. So we want to make sure that we're letting them know that hopefully with doing this assessment, um, we can try and save teeth, which is always our first approach. But we're never going to be able to um, give an accurate estimate without them being under anesthesia. So I will give a little bit of a range. You know, I would be prepared for a minimum of X amount of dollars. Um, it could certainly change. And, you know, we always have a plan B to try and work within your budget. And being in general practice, that's more of a challenge. Um, and it happens more often than in our referral practice, obviously, but um, certainly doable, and it just takes education and setting expectations correctly um, so that these owners aren't blindsided, they're kept in the loop for communication um, throughout the procedure. 
I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request an invitation at ivdi.org slash INV.